Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, we once again have the pleasure of speaking with our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, Hello. great to see you. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, last time we were all together, you teased us with the phrase sovereign relation, sovereignty or relationship sovereignty, sovereignty in a relationship. I, I don't remember it exactly. So I, I've been thinking about this. Are, are we talking about the the um, the idea that in a let's say a marriage, the yeah. husband's in charge and the uh, wife is uh, uh, subservient, or are we talking about uh, something else? Uh, well, the, the concept is the same, but what I'm really talking about is the notion of to have sovereignty in one's relationship means that I get to decide what happens to my body, my heart, and my mind. It means I have agency and autonomy, and I'm not controlled or manipulated by anybody else. I get to make my own decisions, live with the consequences. So what I'm really talking about is individual sovereignty in a relationship, which right. means that obviously each person has that full, you know, sovereignty and empowered sense of like, I get to create and live my life the way I want to. Sure. So everybody's, everybody's in charge of themselves as opposed to somebody else, your partner being in charge of you. Right. Yeah, right. So it's, it's Two individuals, two equals, coming together in a relationship. Well, so exactly. uh, let me just uh, let me just see if I get this right. Uh, and as, I think in the last twenty or thirty years, um, uh, it's been far more common for uh, uh, let's talk about a, a married couple where the both the husband and wife uh, have professions. Uh, whether it be a, a, a you know a professional on Wall Street and a, a, a teacher, whether it be a doctor and a lawyer, and but when I was growing up as a child, uh, the vast majority of relationships were the husband went out to work, and the wife remained at home, and she was a full time homekeeper, and oftentimes that was viewed as the husband, the father's the boss, and the the wife was just somebody working around the house. Although, quite frankly, in recent years, it's understood how valuable a profession of being a stay-at-home stay mom has been, especially with a lot of stay-at-home moms who are uh, uh, self-schooling kids and all those kinds of things. So it's really changed in the last 20 to 30 years would you agree with that? And that it's it's more equal partnerships now as opposed to one being the boss of another. Is that sort of where you were going? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And it's not just about the activities that the people are involved in, whether, you know, the terms of, like you said, most people, you know, more likely couples, both people are working, you know, things like that. But it's also just in terms of like individual choice. So for me, okay, so this word, I got really excited. I mean, I probably have only heard about this word in the last five, eight years, whatever. And I just think it's a really interesting concept because a lot of people don't have this same view of relationships. They kind of see, you know, one person is sort of the dominant one. And, and sometimes, you know, like it can be sort of small or big things, right? But like, you know, one partner makes decisions for both people, like when the other one has free time or the certain person has to do certain chores or has to attend this family gathering or, you know, whether they can go out with the boys or whether she can go out with the girls or whatever, you know, when they have sex, how much they have sex, whatever, like kind of like one person drives and the other person goes along for the ride. So there's a you know, driver and then there's the passenger <laughs> to use the car analogy. But I think that, and, and sometimes I think it's the, you know, we assume it's the male partner controlling the female. And of course, you know, sometimes this is the case and, you know, traditionally this has been the case, but I've actually seen a lot of situations where it's the female controlling the male. You know, there's the cultural trope around, you know, being pussy whipped, right? Or, yeah. um, you know, the talk to the old ball and chain or, you know, I've heard the joke about, you know, the man, you know, 
he has his balls nailed to the wall when he goes to work, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm just saying that like, you know, we have these tropes that we, um, that are the other way. And I, I, I actually think it's better not to have this sort of imbalance. Um, so, but in these situations with the men kind of being at the effect of the woman controlling things, you know, he doesn't want to rock the boat or deal with his partner being upset. And it's almost like he's kind of held hostage in a way. And I realize that it's gone, that's a strong word, right? But it's gone the other way too. But, you know, there's a great book out there called No More Mr. Nice Guy. And it's about um, Dr. Robert A. Glover. He has a PhD in marriage and family therapist. He himself sees himself as a recovering nice guy. <laughs> I, love, I love the idea that he's a recovering <laughs> nice guy. You know, but you bring up a, a, a real good point, And that is, it, it is a trope. But it's based on um, real, you know, human relationships, because it's a matter of personalities. It's not necessarily a matter of, well, you use the word sovereignty. But yes, sometimes in a marriage uh, or a relationship, one person is more dominant than the other, and it can be a man or the the woman. Um, my experience growing up with. Uh, you know, a very large set of cousins and aunts and uncles is that most of the marriages were, as you point out, it was traditional, divided by, you know, jobs. Your job is to take care of the house and the kids. My job is to go out and earn some money. But it wasn't unequal. Right. Um, the responsibilities might have been different, but it was really a sharing um, uh, assignment of duties and the power, if you will, because that's what I, th what I think we're talking about yeah, w yeah, when we're talking about sovereignty, is who's got the power. The power was pretty much equal, um, but maybe in different ways based on, you know, the difference be between men and women. Um, you know, men act a certain way and express their power a certain way. Women express their power a certain way. Um, but I, boy, observing all my aunts and uncles for 30 years, I can tell you they were most of the, our family relationships were pretty darn equal. You know, they would mm. ebb and flow, but they were they had the sovereignty that I think you're talking about. Uh, you know, mm. put it into new age speak of uh, uh, relationship sovereignty. I, I know, I know. This is the love and relationship coach uh, interview. And, but I'm going to jump in also, but then we'll let Michelle react on the other side. Uh, interestingly, uh, you said, uh, I think you started off like in the last six, seven, eight years, uh, you've begun to see a bit of change in the word sovereignty. Um, and it may be a regional thing, coastal, uh, larger states, larger cities. But uh, from time to time, uh, my wife and I drop our littlest grandchildren. We have some that are in their uh, 20s. But the two little ones are off at school. And oftentimes you're going to see the one walking the, the child to school is the father or picking up the child from school is the father. And it, it is not unusual. Uh, and over the last several years to have a house husband who uh, uh, he's the one that stays home. And so so that traditional role that I grew up in the 40s and 50s which I think was very definitely, we can all agree, was the husband at least appeared to have more power because he was the earning partner and oftentimes controlled where the spending uh, went. And although the the wife, in most cases, had that very strong role of raising the children and, and quite frankly, making some far more important decisions affecting the future of their children. But today it is a lot more equal and it may be regional, but I think uh, uh, throughout, at least in the U.S., I don't know about other countries, where the roles have become more recognized as valuable, whether they're out earning financially or staying home and taking care of the children. And so the sovereignty, I think, is um, uh, 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 happening a lot more now, more so than it did, even though uh, my mom was a strong mom. Uh, it the roles seem to be as fairly well assigned as to who was a superior and inferior in the relationship, at least financially, and making those major decisions, theoretically. Mm. So I'm, I'm yeah, I, yeah. I went to one shot for you because now we're stuffing it in your lap. Tell us, 
Tell us where we're going with this. <laughs> where do I begin? I get to say all this stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. So the way I see it is that it's really almost more about like dignity and respect yeah. and kind of self autonomy and, and, and empowerment essentially. So whether one person is doing this task or that task or earning money or not, it's like, are we each, you know, yes. you know, valuable, equal human beings worthy of respect Yes. And um, decision making for our own lives. Yes. And I think um, I love your yeses in there. So thanks for saying that, John, because I think that's what you were saying that you were noticing in your um, upbringing, which is beautiful. You know, I think but there are situations where that's not the case. And so what I even see, you know, I think that having, you know, house husbands has changed the dynamic of the earner and the you know person at home doesn't necessarily mean there's a power differential. Like a man right. being, you know, the house husband means that, but they still have equal, you know, say and weight and how they make decisions as a family and all these kinds of things. So I really want to raise the issue because I actually think that a lot of relationships that I see, especially people who are, you know, over 50, which is our audience, they've sometimes, um, they've started a certain way and they haven't necessarily, you know, maybe like, as I say, the different, like a, you know, one up, one down person, let's say, often it's the, you know, it depends, right? But then, has it can it evolve into something more like this, yeah. or does it stay that way? And just because it's been that way for a decade or two or five, does it have to stay that way? So I yeah. want to. So that's kind of. So my invitation, as you can see, I get really excited about this topic. <laughs> my invitation is that if you're in a relationship, I encourage you to discuss it. Like, how do you see it, and sure. what's working for you? What's not not working for you? You know, how are your patterns working? Um, and maybe, you know, you're afraid to like, you know, I mean, I, I heard recently there was, you know, a man, you know, he gets an hour a week to himself to do his own tasks. This is a man is in, in his fifties, I think. And otherwise, you know, she's got him scheduled with all kinds of things. And I just kind of broke my heart actually. And so that's just a, maybe an extreme example, but like, you know, take a look together. And if it's too difficult or if you're afraid to bring him and bring it up, you know, a coach or counselor like me or, you know, someone can help you sort it out because I think a, a dynamic relationship, you know, which is vibrant is, you know, sustaining and sustainable Yeah. and a brittle stuck relationship is vulnerable relationship. So it's always good to be you kind of, you know, renegotiating yep. um, the rules of engagement. <laughs> I love that phrase, the rules of engagement. Well, I know, yeah, I know. Michelle, I, that's a wonderful explanation, and I think you're you're absolutely right. Um, we we have a new name for it, individual sovereignty, but it really means that the relationship is is a coming together of two equals who respect each other and love each other. Yeah, I think the yeah. word uh, John you just used is correct. Respect each other's roles, okay, and 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 removing some of the financial earning power part of it as being more important. Right. Uh, Regard uh, because regardless it's always been, of the it's always been that way. It's always been that the way. Activities. Yeah. 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 And then my final point really is if you're single and you're looking to, you know, if you'd like to be in a relationship, maybe it's good to think about this topic. You know, how do you feel about it? What do you see? What what do you want going forward? And I think a lot, a lot of times relationships end, you know, long-term married couple ends up getting divorced because this power differential was never able to be addressed adequately. Mm. And, you know, often it's a lot of women, like I'm tired of this. I, I want to be free. I want to have my own choices here. And maybe sometimes it's for men too. It's like, I want to have my own autonomy here. So basically think about what you're looking for and bring it up when you're in the early dating space when you're meeting someone new, you know, how do you see sovereignty in a relationship? And um, what do you mean by that? Well, let's talk about it, you know? So anyway, that's my invitation. Good advice. And I hope everybody accepts your invitation. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.